Praise the Lord. Church, I said, praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight in Jesus' name. I pray that the study of today will be beneficial to everyone. Another amen. Father, we do thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for bringing us together for something good. We pray, Lord, that you open the way into the kingdom for everyone tonight in Jesus' name. For those who have entered, we pray we'll go deeper into the things of God. For those who are yet to enter, we pray that without delay, they will come into the kingdom in Jesus' name and bless all of us together and do your will in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at Mark chapter 4 and I'm reading from verse 26. I'm reading from verse 30. Mark chapter 4 Verse 26, and he said, so is the kingdom of God, as if a man could cast seed into the ground. And then in verse 30, and he said, whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? From those two verses of scripture, you see that Jesus Christ spoke about the kingdom. Actually, he came and he preached and he taught and he was crucified and he suffered and he raised disciples for one solitary purpose to call us into the kingdom of God. That's what you find in verse 26. So is the kingdom of God. Verse 30. Whereunto shall I liken the kingdom of God? After his resurrection, his message to the disciples was still centered on the kingdom of God. Acts chapter 1, we're reading from verse 1 to verse 3. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. The former treatise of I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the disciples whom he had chosen. Look at verse 3. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. After his resurrection, all those days before his ascension that he appeared to them, he was speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom. We hear from Christ, we learn from Christ, we repent and turn unto Christ, and we believe on Christ. We seek him so as to become citizens of the kingdom of God. And we remain, we abide in the word is teaching us so that we can retain our citizenship in the kingdom until he comes again. Without entering the kingdom, all we know you might know the Bible from cover to cover, from Genesis to Revelation. If you don't enter the kingdom, all is vain. Without entering the kingdom, all we do, you might give your body to be burnt, and you might worship every day, 
and you might give all your goods to feed the poor without entering the kingdom all is vain all we possess anything you have you can have all the money in all the banks of the world and you can have all the positions of honor and recognition in the country or in the whole world without entering the kingdom everything will be vain you can attain to any privilege on earth you can attain to any honor or award on earth without entering the kingdom all will be in vain look at that mark again and i'm reading now from verse 11 mark chapter 4 and we're reading from verse 11 it says in verse 11 and he said unto them unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom to many people who read the bible the kingdom is a mystery and to many people who, who, who duck in uh, the doorsteps of the church to them the kingdom it's a mystery. And to many people who even say they have studied the Bible, they have learned the Bible, the mystery of the kingdom is not known unto them. That's why we cannot gloss over, pass over, rush over the kingdom. And then go to the next scene and the next scene and the next scene and finish studying the gospel of Mark and then go to another scene because the kingdom is very important it tells us in mark chapter 1 reading from verse 14 mark chapter 1 verse 14 now after that john was put in prison jesus came into galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of god you see that his concern is the kingdom of god and the purpose of his preaching is that we enter into the kingdom of God, preaching the kingdom of God. Verse 15, and saying, the time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God, that's it again, that's it again. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel believe the good news that's how to enter it tells us in mark chapter 12 reading from verse 32 mark chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 32 in verse 32 and the scribes said unto him well master the scribe called jesus master and he said, he also affirmed what Jesus had said. He says, well, master, that was said the truth. He recognized the truth. For there is one God, and there is none other but he. Look at how far he has gone. He recognized the existence of God. He recognized the uniqueness of God recognize the most high position and place of God and then he says and to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the soul and with all the strength look at that he says he recognizes the great commandment in the word of God that to love God with all the heart and all the understanding and all the soul and all the strength and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole bunch offerings and sacrifices. What do you think of a man like that? A man that says he believes in the existence of God? A man that says he knows that Jesus Christ is Lord and Master. A man that says we have to love him, the Almighty God, with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, all our strength, and then to love our neighbor as herself. What do you think of a man like that? Verse 34, and when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. You have not entered yet. 
Because you don't enter with your head, you enter with your heart. You don't enter with the truth, doctrinal. You enter with a transformation of heart. It says, you've answered well. Everything you've said is correct. And I want to tell you, you are not in the kingdom yet, but you are not far from the kingdom of God. And no man after that does ask him any question. Tonight we're looking at Mark chapter 4, verses 26 to 34. And I'm talking to you and we're learning on ascertaining our citizenship in the kingdom of God. Ascertaining, making sure that we have our citizenship in the kingdom of God. Ascertaining your own citizenship in the kingdom of God. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the priority of entering the kingdom of God. The kingdom is established. The kingdom has been proclaimed. The kingdom has been revealed unto us in the pages of the New Testament. And Jesus Christ has exalted that kingdom. And he has opened the door to that kingdom. And now the priority number one thing in every life is that we enter into the kingdom of God. The priority of entering the kingdom of God. Point number two, the pain of exclusion from the kingdom of God. If it so happens that somebody who has gone to seminary and has studied the Bible in English, in Greek, in Hebrew, in all the original languages, and yet if he misses the kingdom, the pain of exclusion from the kingdom of God. If it so happens that somebody comes for Bible study every week and he learns the Bible, underlines the Bible, repeats the Bible, if he misses the kingdom of God, the pain of exclusion from the kingdom of God. If somebody happens to be a teacher of the word, a preacher of the word, a worker that is helping other people to know the word, if that teacher, if that preacher, if that person misses the kingdom of God, there is the pain of exclusion from the kingdom of God. Point number two, the pain of exclusion from the kingdom of God. Point number three, our privilege in the everlasting kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has an earthly side. The kingdom of God has an heavenly side. That heavenly side is the eternal nature of the kingdom. And when we get to that eternal kingdom, our privilege in the everlasting kingdom of God. Point number one. Tell me number one over there. That's good. Tell me with preacher's voice. The priority of entering the kingdom of God. Come back to Mark chapter 4 again. Reading from verse 26. In verse 26, and he said, so is the kingdom of God. He said, it's a reality. It has an existence. It has an establishment. So is the kingdom of God. As if a man should cast seed into the ground. Is the farmer a reality? Yes. Is the seed a reality? Yes. Is the ground a reality? Yes. Is sowing and reaping a reality? Yes. He said, so real then is the kingdom of God. So factual is the kingdom of God. 
and so well known is the kingdom of God. It says, so is the kingdom of God. Look at verse 30. And he said, whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? If you are comparing likening one to the other, if number one is real, that we are comparing with number two, number two will be real. It's still telling us the kingdom of God is real. Do farmers give priority to sowing? Yes, they do to feed their nation. It says then we need to give priority to the kingdom of God. It tells us in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. It says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek ye first, give it priority, make it number one in your life. Look about, look at the things you do in life, and the places you go in life, and the things you practice in your life. Do you sleep? Yes, you do. You eat? Yes, you do. You work? Yes, you do. You go to college? Yes, you do. You have certificate? Yes, you do. You try to get married? Yes, you do. And you are desirous having children? Yes, you do. But it says all those things are not as important individually or collectively as the kingdom of God. It says the number one thing you have to think about, the number one thing you have to pursue is the kingdom of God and His righteousness. You could have all those things I spoke about and many things more and yet miss heaven. If you're going to get to heaven and you're going to spend eternity in the kingdom of God, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. They'll come later, but seek ye the first, first the kingdom of God. John chapter 3. Reading from verse 1, John chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 1. It says in verse 1 that there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, a ruler of the Jews. He knew his Old Testament. That's not enough. He knew the covenant of God. That's not enough. He had a position among the rulers of the religious Israel. That's enough. Then came, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, teacher, master, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. My brother, my sister, that's good, but that's not enough. There are many people that say, I believe Jesus is a great teacher. That's good, not enough. I believe that Jesus was the founder of the greatest religion on earth, the founder of Christianity. That's good, but that's not enough. I believe that Jesus is a great prophet. That's good, that's not enough. I believe that Jesus is a miracle worker. He healed my body and he provided for me and he gave me success. That's good, that's not enough. We know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. I believe in miracles. That's good, that's not enough. The priority of entering the kingdom of God. That you believe in miracles, you believe in prayer, you believe God can do all things. Until you enter into the kingdom of God, you have not got enough. Verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, 
Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You've gone far, but not far enough. You believe Jesus came from God, you have not gone far enough. You believe he did great miracles, you have not gone far enough. You believe that these things he has done, they are not by Beelzebub. As some other people say, this is a miracle from God, that's good, not enough. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 4. Nicodemus says unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? He didn't understand the priority of the faith. All he knew about the Sanhedrin, about the history of the Israelites, all he knew about the Sabbath, all he knew about the commandments, they're not enough. And the man was totally ignorant about the number one thing that will make him have the evidence, the experience of the kingdom of God. Verse 5, Jesus answered, very late, very late. I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That shows you then how important this is. It's the number one thing. The kingdom of God is the government and the dominion of God. The kingdom of God is the reign of God. The kingdom of Christ is the reign of Christ. When Christ enters into a life, and he reigns in that life, and he controls that heart, and he controls that life, that is the rule, that is the control, that is the reign of Christ on that person. That's the kingdom. There is a present phase of the kingdom where God reigns and he has dominion in the heart of man. Then there is an eternal phase of that kingdom, a future phase of that kingdom, the universal eternal kingdom. I want you to look at Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, reading from verse 47. So important, the kingdom is the kingdom of God. Mark chapter 9, verse 47. If thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. See what Jesus is saying? Eyes are very important to man. And yet it says, if your eye offends you, if your eye makes you to offend, if somebody who is like your sight, somebody like your eyes, somebody that will pave the way for you, somebody that will make a way for you, somebody that will lead you to your desired destination, that's your eye. If he causes you to offend and is going to make you miss the kingdom of God, it says separate from him. That's how important the kingdom of God is. And he said in another place, if your hand, your hand that will achieve success, your hand that will give you prosperity, your hand that will make you have everything you desire on earth, if that hand causes you to offend and separates you from the kingdom of God, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one hand 
than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Anybody so important in your, uh, in your life like an eye? Anybody so important in your life like a hand? Anybody so important in your life like a foot that carries you and moves you and takes you to the place you want to be? And yet it's an offense. And yet it's cutting you away from the kingdom. And yet it's making you to despise the kingdom. Look down on the kingdom. And it's making you to be separated from the kingdom of God. Look at that body seven again. If thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Anybody there that has a giver, breadwinner, always giving you money, always giving you livelihood, always providing this and that, the only problem is he demands a pay for what he gives you. And the pay, he knows you don't have money, that's why he gives you money. He knows you don't have food, that's why he gives you food. He knows you don't have any support, that's why he gives you support. But he demands that you'll pay back with your body. Commit sin with him. Be a sin partner. So that he'll keep on giving you what he has been giving you. That's the eye Jesus was talking about. Better to go hungry and get to heaven than having this person supply your need and then you go to hell forever and ever. You will not go to hell. Look at Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 15. It says in verse 15, of Luke chapter 16 and he said unto them ye are they we justify yourselves before men but God knows your hearts for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God there are people so-called Christians. There are people, so-called religious people, they work hard at being appreciated by their fellow men. They work hard at being honored by their local church. But they do not take care of their inward righteousness, private life. It says, you justify yourselves before men. But God knows your heart. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. Verse 16, the law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached. And every man presses into it. Every man cuts the cord that pulls him back, that ties him down, and he separates himself from anything that will pin him down, and he presses into the kingdom of God. The kingdom is so important. That's why you give it priority. Three things. Number one, the priority of entering the kingdom. The priority of entering the kingdom. John chapter 6, reading from verse 26. John chapter 6, verse 26. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you seek me, 
not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Jesus said, you're searching for me, you're looking for me, you're running after me, you're calling me, you're asking me questions, you're coming in my presence because you ate those loaves and you're filled. Verse 27, labor not for the meat that perishes, but for that meat which endures unto everlasting life. Why do you serve God? Why do you come to church? Why do you read the Bible? Why do you pray? Why are you seeking God? Is it because of the material things of the world? The mundane things in the world? Jesus said, that's not wise. Labor not for the meat that perishes, but labor for the meat that endures unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give you for him as God the Father sealed. It says, seek the salvation, the righteousness, the kingdom that only Christ can give. Number one, the priority. Number two, the point of entry. The point of entry into the kingdom. How do we enter? At what point do we enter? Did we enter the kingdom when we were born into the world? No. Did we enter the kingdom the day we bought a Bible and we started reading the Bible? No. Did we enter the kingdom when we turned over a new leaf and we tried to be our best? No. Did we enter the kingdom when we chose a Bible-believing church and we said, that's my church, I'll be going there? No. Did we enter the kingdom when we surrender ourselves and be a worker in the church? No. When did we enter the kingdom? The point of entry into the kingdom. John chapter 3. Verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The point of entry is the point of being born again. That's the day you turned away from sin and you turned to the Savior. That's the day you turned away from darkness and you turned to the light. That's the day you make Jesus Christ your Savior, your Redeemer. And because you believe on what he did for you on the cross of Calvary, he washed your sins away, he forgave all your sins, and he set you free to go and sin no more. Number one, the priority of entering the kingdom. Number two, the point of entry into the kingdom. Number three, the purpose of enduring in the kingdom. We don't come in and go out of the kingdom. We don't crawl in and crawl out of the kingdom. We come in, we stay. We come in, we abide. We come in, we continue. Acts chapter 14, verse 22. Acts chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 22, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue. And exhorting them to continue in the faith that we must through much tribulation, trial, trouble, enduring, enter into the kingdom of God. Enter into the kingdom of God. The priority of entering in, 
the point of entry into the kingdom the purpose of enduring in the kingdom luke chapter 14 chapter 22 luke chapter 14 sorry chapter 22 verse 28 ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations christ telling his own disciples and i appoint unto you a kingdom as my father has appointed unto me you have continued with me and you have endured and you're still enduring and so i appoint you a kingdom as my father has appointed unto me that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom in my future kingdom and sit on the throne judging the 12 tribes of israel to enter the kingdom and to continue in the kingdom till the end till the eternal phase of the kingdom we must remain that kingdom must remain the priority of our lives at every moment in second timothy chapter 2 verse chapter 4 verse 18 second timothy chapter 4 verse 18 and the lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom ah you see that amen now he will preserve us he will keep us until the heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever amen point number two the pain of exclusion from the kingdom of god we would have said everybody will enter into the kingdom of god that final kingdom because of the love of god because of the mercy of god because of the grace of god actually he wants everyone to enter the kingdom but unfortunately there will be people who will be excluded from the kingdom look at matthew chapter 7 Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord. There are many people who pray. There are many people who fast. There are many people who call Jesus Lord. But look at verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, 
they still keep on calling him Lord until they die, even after death. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we have, have we not prophesied in thy name? Yes, you did. And in thy name cast out devils? Yes, you did. And in thy name have done many wonderful works? Yes, you did. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. They call him Jesus, they work iniquity. They call him Lord, they work iniquity. They read the Bible, they work iniquity. They preach to other people, they work iniquity. They're prophesying. But they're walking in iniquity. They are not free from sin. They don't believe that. That you can be free from sin. They sin from day to day. They sin in the public. They sin in the private. They sin in little, little things. And they sin in big, big things. And yet they're religious. And then Jesus said, I'll profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in Nekoichi. I pray you'll not be a worker of in Nekoichi. Luke chapter 23. In Luke chapter 23, reading from verse, Luke chapter 13, verse 23. In Luke chapter 13, verse 23. Look at what it says. Then said one unto him, Lord, called him Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, strive to enter in. Don't worry about other people. Are there few that will be saved? You strive, endeavor to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say, will seek to enter in and shall not be able when once the master of the house is risen up and has shut the door. That means the opportunity to enter is not forever. There's a time the door into the kingdom will be shut. A person that continues his sin and his sins with impunity. A time comes when the door of grace is shut. That's what Jesus said. He says, when once the master of the house is risen up and a shot to the door, and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer and say, I know you not whence ye are. Look at this. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in your presence. When you multiply the bread to feed 5,000, we well, were there. We ate part of that broken miracle bread. When you fed 4,000 miraculously, we were there. We ate part of that miraculously provided bread. And then it says in verse 26, And thou was taught in our streets, you brought your crusade to our street. You brought your public teaching to our sea, to our street. We were there. We heard you. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me. Tell me. All ye workers of iniquity. If the Bible study does not cleanse us from iniquity, it has not done what it ought to do. If the Bible study or the teaching of the Word 
does not separate us from sin, from iniquity, it will profit us nothing. On the final day, he said, Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves thrust out, cast out. The question is, why do people miss the kingdom of God? The question is, people like you and I, that read the Bible, that study the Bible, people like you and I that know the name of God, people that have heard about Christ, why do they miss the kingdom of God? Number one, delay. Delay. They have heard that you are hearing tonight and they know it's essential, it's important to be saved, to be born again. Why are they not born again? Don't they know it takes repentance? They know. Don't they know all you have to do is turn away from sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? They know. Why do they miss the kingdom? Delay. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 6. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while is near. But because while is near, while the opportunity is there, the delay, that's where some of them miss. You have heard of the five foolish virgins. Like the wise virgins, they knew that the Lord was coming. Like the wise virgins, they went out to meet him. Like the wise virgins, these foolish virgins had their lambs, but they delayed in having the oil that will keep their lights burning. That's why the mistake you will not delay. Number two, double mindedness. Double mindedness. Should I be saved? Shouldn't I be saved? Shall I give my life to the Lord? Shall I not give my life to the Lord? Shall I do it now? Can I make it later? I'm still young. There's still time. And I still need to do this and this and this. All these uh, daddies and mommies who are now saying they are born again, they are born again. They have gone into the world before. And they have tasted all those things of the world. And later, 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 they came in. And they are now born again. And they, they have this double mind, double mindedness. They don't know, you don't know when Christ will come. You don't know when you will die. If you are going to be saved, do it now. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Verse 8, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Unstable. I will seek the Lord. I change my mind. I will get saved. I change my mind. I will forsake all the bad company. I change my mind. I will get born again. I change my mind. Is that double-mindedness? That makes them to miss the kingdom. Point number three, disregard. Disregard. Just ignore. I hear, not ready, leave me alone. Disregard. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should not we should let them sleep for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast 
and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? The greatest thing in your life, salvation. The greatest thing in your life, the new birth. The greatest thing in your life, the kingdom of God. The door is open and you are to enter. But you disregard, neglect. You remember Esau? He was hungry. He had a birthright. And then Jacob said, You sell the birthright to me. And he said, I'm at the point of death. What will the birthright do to me? He disregarded the birthright. That's why he missed the opportunity. And at the time, he could have recovered, regained that birthright. There was no chance to repent. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. There are some people who say, the grace of God is there. The grace of God is enough for me. Anytime I'm ready, God, I'm not ready for you now. Salvation, I'm not ready now. Righteousness, I'm not ready now. Repentance, I'm not ready now. The grace of God is there. And the grace of God will always be there. How wrong you are looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright for ye know how that actual word, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. A day will come when the tears will not avail, when the sorrow will not avail. And when the seeking will not avail, don't delay. Delay has caused many people to lose the opportunity of entering the kingdom. Be free from double-mindedness. Don't have disregard. Number four, denomination. Denomination. Can you, uh, can you imagine how denomination helps, uh, hinders some people? Something that should have helped hinders them. Have you entered the kingdom? I'm a member of Deeper Life. Dad and mom are members of Deeper Life. Dad and mom are serious, committed, workers in deeper life. Are you born again? Well, I, let me answer you this way. I am a worker in a Bible-believing church. And everybody knows me. If I'm not there, they will know. Can I tell you the name of my church? Deeper life. They will miss heaven because of denomination their assurance is not based on Christ it's not based on personal repentance it's not based on turning away from sin having the grace of God and the Spirit of God witnessing in their hearts the children of God it's denomination Matthew chapter 3 in Matthew chapter 3, I read from verse 9. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. 
For I say unto you that God is able to raise, is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. The stones that don't have dad or mom in the church. The strangers that do not have father or mother in the denomination. God is able to raise up stones as children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree of whatever denomination every tree of whatever assembly every tree no matter who the parents are every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire number five drunkenness ah that doesn't catch me i don't drink look at this look chapter 21 for starting for Luke chapter 21, verse 34, and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with sophiting and drunkenness. It's not your mouth, your heart overcharged with sophiting and drunkenness you are following the fashion of the day you're following the pursuit of the day you're following uh, the aspirations ambitions of the day it becomes like wine uh, that intoxicates you it takes the bible from your hand you're running a rat race with the rest of the world it takes prayer from you it takes sobriety from you it takes seriousness from you it takes the remembrance of the kingdom of God from you. Take it yourselves. Let's at any time, at any time, your hearts be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness and the cares of this life. Not wine. The cares of this life. Somebody got it. I must get it. I want a second certificate. I want a second doctor certificate. I want this. I want that. I want that. And while you are running after that, cares of this life, so that they come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the earth. Number six, distraction. Distraction. What does that mean? You're going this way. You're hearing some noise behind you. You see some other things around. And because of that, you look back. You turn back. What's distracting you? You're coming to the Bible study. And then on the side of the road, there's some people clapping and playing guitar and mentioning something and singing. You're distracted. Your branch there. You're seeking salvation. Oh Lord, save me. Enough is enough. I must not continue in this evil way. And then somebody comes and he says, You know, I discovered a new business and you have to plug in into this. You forget about the salvation, distraction. Look at Luke chapter 17. Verse 32, Luke 17, verse 32. Are you there? Have you opened Luke 17, 32? Read it, one, two, three, go. Remember Lord's wife. She saw angels. Angels laid hold on her hands. Angels pointed to the way of escape. Angels said, hurry up, Sodom, Gomorrah will be burnt down to ashes. They were going destruction. All the herdsmen of Lot and the wife, they were back in Sodom. All the catchers, they were back in Sodom. 
every sin they ever labored for, they were back in Sodom. Some of the children have married and they have in-laws over there. Are we going to live without them? Distraction. She looked back and she became a pillar of salt. I will not look back. Number seven, deafness. Deafness. Deaf to the call of the spirit, Zechariah. Chapter seven, I read from verse 11. Zechariah chapter, 11, chapter 7 verse 11 But they refused to hack him And pulled away the shoulder And stopped their ears That they should not hear Are they talking about salvation? I block my ears I don't want to hear that What I want to hear now I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What I want to hear now, ye are more than a conqueror. What I want to hear now is how every storm of life will be over. What I want to hear now is about faith, how I will remove every mountain. Salvation, I'm not ready for that yet. And they block their ears and they are deaf, deliberately deaf. I pray salvation will not miss you acts chapter 7 verse 57 acts chapter 7 verse 57 it says in verse 57 then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. They stopped their ears. They will not hear. But thank God I hear. Thank God I hear. If we stop our life consuming speech and race towards an uncertain eternity, None of us need to be like Lord's wife. Stop. You're running too fast. The world is too much embedded in your soul. You see too much of the world. Ambition is taking away righteousness from you. Money is eating up your very heart. And the things of this world, they are becoming your life-consuming fire. Stop. Think. Turn around. Don't become like Lord's wife. Don't become like Esau. Don't be like Balaam. And don't live your life like Saul, like Gehazi. Like the mixed multitude, like Judas is carried, like demons. If you miss heaven, there's no return from hell. Once you are there, think about it. To spend five minutes in hell, burning lake of fire, is unbearable. To spend one hour, to spend one day, to spend one year, to spend a hundred years, a thousand years, a million years, forever and ever. Why are you going to throw your heart and your life away? Why are you going to spend eternity with Satan in hell? God forbid. I said, God forbid. Stop that rat race. Get on your thinking cab again and say, I will be wise. There's the pain of exclusion from the kingdom of God. But thank God, I will not miss heaven. 
I will not miss the kingdom of God. I said, I will not miss the kingdom of God. Point number three, our privilege in the eternal kingdom of God. Our privilege in the eternal kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Matthew 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Only one kingdom, not kingdoms. Kingdom of God. Eternal, everlasting, high, holy, great. It will never end. And it says, your priority is that kingdom of God. Seek it. It doesn't come on somebody without seeking it. Your heart, your mind, your life must be there. And you seek it, forgetting every other thing that competes with the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You cannot seek that kingdom in isolation without righteousness. And then it says, all these things shall be added unto you. Addition will come. But don't make those added things number one. The number one thing is salvation. The number one thing is eternal life. The number one thing is you repent and you turn away from sin. Luke chapter 7, reading from verse 28. Luke chapter 7, verse 28. For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not a greater than the prophet, greater prophet than John the Baptist, but he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Here is the highest and greatest promotion you can have. John the Baptist, greater than all men and women that ever lived before him. But now, the least in the kingdom. The least in the kingdom who has given his life, his heart unto the Lord Jesus Christ. And is a citizen of the kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. What a great privilege. Luke Chapter 20, I'm reading from verse 35. Luke chapter 20, reading from verse 35. But they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that word and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor give on in marriage, Neither can they die anymore, for they are equal unto the angels. They are equal unto the angels. What a great privilege. Here we are of the flesh. Only water and dust do we have in the body. But as we become citizens of the kingdom, it says, eventually when we get to that everlasting kingdom will be equal to the angels and are the children of God being the children of resurrection great privilege you will not miss it I will not miss it but you know repentance very important salvation very important you must know the time. You cannot just say, I think I'm born again. No, that's not enough. You must know the day, the time, what you did, how you handed over your life unto the Lord, and the Spirit of God will witness with your heart. 
that you have repented, you have believed, and there is a definite change of heart and life. And then you know that you know, without any shadow of doubt, I am a citizen of the kingdom. Luke chapter 22, reading from verse 18. Luke chapter 22, verse 18. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. What do you think? Sitting on the same table with Jesus, the Lord, the Savior, the Alpha and Omega, the Prince of Peace, the very Son of God, sitting on the same table in the kingdom of God and eating with him. That alone, that privilege alone should make you to abandon every other sin and get into the kingdom. Verse 29. In verse 29, and I appoint unto you a kingdom. As my father has appointed unto me, what a great privilege. In verse 30, that she may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. You say those are the apostles, but look at first Corinthians chapter six, first Corinthians chapter six verse 2 first corinthians chapter 6 verse 2 do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world don't you know as those apostles are judging the 12 tribes of israel you saints of god we saints of god shall judge the world you didn't hear that one. Look at verse 3. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? Even the fallen angels, we saints of God, will judge them. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 8. Second Timothy chapter 4, read from verse 7. I have fought a good fight. I have fought a good fight. What Paul fought is different from what you are fighting. He fought the beasts at Ephesus. You may just have to fight sleep that takes away prayer from you fight that sleep you might have to fight the ambition that takes the interest of the kingdom away from your heart fight that ambition you might have to fight the pressure from your family that says that you must not leave the family religion stay in the religion that doesn't get anyone to heaven you might have to fight that whatever it is that will hinder you from getting to the kingdom you will fight it may be the fear of man there's a man there's a woman that will not allow you the freedom to obey the lord and to get to the kingdom of God and to abide in the kingdom of God, you must obey the Lord. But as a man, as a woman, that's like a bully, a tyrant. And even the facial appearance terrifies you. And then you forget the kingdom. You cannot do that. If they will smash your head, you must get to the kingdom. If they're going to burn you up, you must get to the kingdom. No man on earth, no woman on earth will take the kingdom 
away from your hand. Say good amen to the Almighty God. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And sports, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. You will not miss the kingdom. Second Peter chapter 1. In 2 Peter chapter 1, I read from verse 11. Verse 11, For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It says, if you are diligent to come into the faith, you are diligent to add virtue to that faith, add knowledge to that virtue, add temperance to that knowledge, add patience, perseverance to that self-control, add godliness to that perseverance, add brotherly kindness, to that godliness and add charity to that brotherly kindness. It says in verse 8, If these things be in you and about, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind, and cannot see afar off, and has forgotten that he was purged from his own sins. Wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling an election sure. For ye do, if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen, Scanty. Second Timothy, chapter 2, verse 12. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him because of suffering, because of embarrassment, because of opposition, if we deny him, he also will deny us. You will not deny the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God as prepared for them that love him. We love him when the kingdom will remain in the kingdom. I has not seen, ears have not heard what we are going to have. The blessings of the kingdom will be ours in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 22. Revelation 22. I'm reading from verse 3. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. His servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face. What about that? 
that will see the face of the Almighty, and his name shall be in their foreheads, and there shall be no night there. And there they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign. And they shall reign. And we shall reign. I pray you will not miss that privilege. Daniel chapter 7 verse 13 and verse 14 Daniel chapter 7 verse 13 I saw in the night visions and behold one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom, a kingdom, a kingdom. And all people and nations and languages shall serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. His kingdom that we shall not be destroyed. Will you have part in that kingdom? Verse 27. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Whatever you are going through today, always remember that everlasting kingdom. Whatever may be the challenge today, always remember that everlasting kingdom. Whatever may be the persecution today, always remember that everlasting kingdom. Whatever may be the temptation for the cares of the world and for the ambition of the things of the world to sway you, and to drag you away from the kingdom, remember the privilege we're going to have when we get on the other side. For all the citizens of the kingdom of God, many blessings and great blessings in value and in number await us. We have blessings now and we have manifold eternal blessings that will be ours in the everlasting kingdom. Watch, we may deny ourselves of, and nothing in comparison with the glorious benefits we're going to have in that heavenly kingdom, in that eternal kingdom. God is preparing a kingdom. Will you be there? I will be there. The world behind me. The Lord before me. That kingdom I will not miss. I'll bear my cross. I'll bear my cross. I'll take every challenge. I'll fight anything that will draw me away from the kingdom. I will spread the message of the kingdom. And when that day shall come, I will be there. I will be there. Daniel chapter 12, verse 2 and verse 3. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt, and they that the wise are the wise virgins here today they that the wise are the wise children of God are they here today they that the wise shall shine at the brightness of the firmament and 
they that turn many to righteousness are the stars forever and ever. I will not miss that kingdom for anything on earth. Whatever the devil may present to you, like glittering, shining gold, brush them aside. Focus on the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All other things you need will be added unto you. If you are not born again, don't delay. This is the time to be born again. If you are not born again, don't allow denominationalism. I'm a member of Deeper Life. I'm a member of that church. Don't allow that to be cloud you. You must be born again. If you're not born again, don't allow double-mindedness to hinder you. Be of one mind and focus on getting into the kingdom. Tonight is your night. If you're not born again yet, don't allow distraction to hinder you. Don't allow disregard for the heavenly virtue to hinder you. You're going to tell yourself and say whatever it is the devil has been using the drunkenness that makes your mind to be swayed and to be staggering like a drunken person and you're seeking after the things of this world don't allow that to hinder you this kingdom is yours and you must have it in jesus name and nobody is rushing out like, you know, we sometimes do after the teaching instead of praying and praying through. Then we're rushing for this and we're rushing for that. Don't allow anything to hinder you today. This is the time to enter in. If you're born again already, for you to establish, to be established in the kingdom, to abide in the kingdom, and for you to be built on the solid rock, so that whatever wind or waves may blow, that will not blow you away. You're going to make up your mind, become serious for the things of God, and say, this heavenly kingdom, I will possess. And as you pray, the Lord will answer your prayer. Rise up now. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. We came so that we can have the profit and the benefit from the kingdom of God. Nothing will hinder you. Nothing will stop you. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Not just a short prayer. Find out. Let the Spirit tell you, are you born again? Are you saved? Are you free from sin? Are you a citizen of the kingdom of God? Pray about that. If you're already born again, are you victorious? Are you more than a conqueror? Are you living the life that if the rapture should take place now, 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 at this time, you will make it? Tell the Lord.